hey welcome back so we have completed with the decision tree regression part and we have known that decision trees are great for obtaining non-linear relationships between input features and the target variable so the inner working of the decision tree can be thought of a bunch of if else conditions it starts at the top that is from the root node this nodes then get splits into the left and right node that were the decision nodes that we have discussed before. These nodes then split into their respective right and left nodes. At the end, we get the leaf node. At the end of the leaf node, the average of the observation that occurs within the area is computed. The most bottom nodes are referred to as the leaf or the terminal nodes. So that was all the thing that we have learned about the decision node, uh, decision tree. Now, Decision tree is an easily understood and interpreted algorithm and hence the single tree may not be enough for the model to learn the features from it. On the other hand, decision tree also faces the problem of overfitting of data. All of these can be encapsulated and worked out from random forest regression. Random forest is also a tree based algorithm that uses the qualities features of multiple decision tree for making decision. So what where we were having a single decision tree for the prediction. Now we have some a bunch of random trees which togetherly are known as a forest will be used for predicting them out. So therefore it can be referred as a forest of trees and hence the name random forest. The term random forest is uh, due to the fact that this algorithm is a forest of randomly created decision tree. So rather than having one decision tree, so rather than having one tree, so let's just have one tree, we will be having a bunch of tree. And from that bunch of trees, uh, we will be having different plants or the different nodes of it. Okay. And from those, we will predict out the fruit, which kind of fruit we will get. After that, we will just conjugate everything, uh, average all the predictions, okay, and get out the final output from it. So that's how the random forest works. The decision tree algorithm has the major disadvantages in that uh, it causes overfit. Okay, so your data gets overfit. It gets really, uh, it gets much of a high variance on your data set. So we will talk more about uh, overfitting and underfitting once we jump with the classification part just right now we have high variance that is our model works very good in the training set but is not able to predict in the test set the decision tree algorithm has a major disadvantage is that it causes overfitting this problem can be limited by implementing the random forest regression in place of the decision tree regression additionally the random forest algorithm is also quite fast and robust than other regression models. Let's look into the working on this random forest. How does it eventually works? So random forest is an ensemble of decision tree. So we have random number of decision trees. So this might be DS31, DS31, DS32, and we have DS3N. So we have numerous random decision tree, and from those decision tree, we get different outputs. Okay, this is to say that many trees constructed in a certain random way to form a random forest. So, if we talk about the algorithm, let's start from the uh, beginning. Each tree is created from a different sample of rows. At each node, a different sample of feature is selected for splitting. So, we have a DS tree over here. For this, we have different kind of samples to split the tree over here. Again, we have different thing to split the tree over here we have again different samples of feature for splitting each of these trees made its own individual prediction so whenever we pass in some kind of data let's say x equals to 2000 for that we have to find out the value of uh, uh, y so what will happen is we pass the value of x in all of these ds3 let's say over here we have y equals to mm, 2.5 maybe uh, over here we are able to predict y equals to 3.5 over here we are able to predict uh, it is 3 and over here 
after this all of these trees are passed okay so we have n number of trees so we average all of them out so what we do is let's say we have as of now let's say we have average uh, dst three dst but in practice there will be a lot more than three trees okay so what we do in this phase is we just add them up 2.5 3.5 plus 3 by 3 and we divide them out so it's 6.5 then 6.5 plus 2.5 is 9 so 9 by 3 is 3 so the y value that we get at the end is 3 that is how the random forest algorithm works the averaging makes a random forest better than a single decision tree hence improve its accuracy and reduces overfitting a prediction from the random forest regression is an average of all the predictions uh, produced by the trees in the forest so let's say if we have worked with this uh, decision tree if it was a single decision tree we know the actual y so what we have over here is the y dash okay we are predicting the y dash and we know the actual y value is somewhere between uh, 3.1 so the actual y value is 3.1 and we have to find out the predicted value that is the y dash so if we have plotted out in this decision tree only this decision tree we would have gotten y dash that is y1 of y dash then we would have uh, gotten 2.5 then again for the second decision tree we would have gotten uh, y2 dash as 3.5 and for the last decision tree okay, we should have got something so we can see that we have a variance we have a lot of variance over here okay and in this case at the end what we are doing is averaging them out with which gives me an actual good value that is three okay so after averaging them out we get the value as three which is the nearest to 3.1 which is better than any of these decision tree values that's it that's how random forest works so now that we have known uh, decision tree regression random forest regression let's implement each one of them in the lab sections thank you very much hope you are quite well versed with decision trees now let's jump into the lab sections